Now, she's still going to on the line. Yeah, bro. She's, no, bro. She's. We're going to talk about comparing samples to a population or sample to sample. Other sample to other sample. So basically, well, after this lesson, you'll see how we answer questions. It's, there's not a lot of variation in answering the question. Alright? All you really need to know is how to use, how to work up. Uh, work out the confidence interval. That's a really important thing. And then try to think about how to answer the question. In fact, there's only sort of like one standard way of answering the question, but in the context. All right, always in the context of the question. You can, you can, you can answer what, whatever. There's one sort of like really one standard way of answering because P is either in or outside. Yeah. Right. So you really can't determine, but you've got to answer it in terms of the question. All right? So, now, long introduction, but what you really need to know is in waste exam, you are supposed to compare the approximate confidence interval from the sample to a claim value of P and suggest whether there's sufficient evidence to suggest that the sample appears to come from the same population. All right? Again, there will be some standard answer in a few minutes. You, are, you will probably be asked compare approximate confidence interval from the sample to a claim value of P or one, or one that arises from the historical data and suggest whether the claim or the data is supported by the sample. And then finally, compare approximate confidence interval from two or more samples after change condition. Change condition is such that you've got something in, in like say now, you've got, uh, you, you collected a sample for maybe three months, and then after three months, you run a certain campaign and you, you, uh, you uh, whatever again, you do the sam sampling again. So that is what is meant by change condition. All right? Now, the thing is, uh, the course doesn't have hypothesis testing. We did some hypothesis testing, if you remember in one of the investigation last year. Chi-square. Yeah, chi-square. <gasps> so that's one of the uh, hypotheses, I think, but it's not actually in the course. Chi-square, bro. So, um, yes. All of the body. It's a challenge thing to do to really come to conclusions, unless you've done the uh, hypothesis testing. All right? But this is uh, what the course is, so we've got to uh, think about it. So now, the problem type one is the claim value of P. When you are given a population proportion via uh, Via, uh, via a claim, oh, forget the word, by, by a claim or historical data, we can often comment on whether the claim or the data is supported by sample from the same population. All right, so look at this. The, the, the thing is, you've got a situation where P could be inside the sample, all right? Or P could be outside. It's either in or out, that's all. Mm -hmm. All right, so case one. If a claim value of P lies within an observed confidence interval from a sufficient large sample, then the sample may have come from the same population, but there's insufficient evidence to suggest that the sample came from a different population. All right, so that's the sort of standard answer you have to give. Yes, may suggest, use the word suggest, but there's insufficient uh, evidence. Or the claim, uh, the claim value of P may be valid, but there's insufficient evidence to suggest that the claim value of P shouldn't be accepted, all right? It's one of those that, I don't know how to tell you the definitive answer, okay? I mean, that's statistics for you, all right? Statistics, I've used statistics in terms of many ways uh, to justify one, my research, all right? That's statistics for you. So case two, if a claim value of P lies completely outside of an observed confidence level from the sufficient large sample, then the sample may have come from a different population. But there's, again, insufficient evidence to suggest that the sample came from the same population. Or the claim value of P may not be valid. But there's insufficient evidence to suggest that the claim value of P can be accepted based on this sample. So think about how you want to answer it. The, those are the way that you answer question. All right? That's all I can say. Unless you've gone through the hypothesis testing, it's really hard to say that it is correct. 
all right? Now, we should always avoid saying that the sample verifies the claim value of P due to the nature of random sampling, okay? Never avoid saying that. That's important. All right, let's go to example one. A local fashion designer claims that approximately 70% of Perth residents wear dark-coloured clothing to work. Uh, over the course of a week, a random sample of 120 Perth residents go to work was taken and it was observed that 70 of them were, that were wearing dark-coloured clothing. Use an approximate 95% confidence interval to comment on the fashion designer's claim. Well, first thing you need to do is write down the distribution. Um, this one, really I'm going to straight away assume that it is uh, normally distributed. All right. If you want, you can take a step to show that MP is greater than 10 and 1 minus P is greater than 10 because you've got sufficient uh, large number. You could do that, but I'm just going to write straight as uh, P hat is normally distributed with 70 over 120. I've, I've already worked out the man number using my calculator. I saved me writing down all. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing that I would make a mistake. Therefore, I, I put it in the calculator straight away. All right? So, if you know that there's 95% confidence interval, always write this out. This is the important thing to write out. So that the examiner knows that you know the Z value is 1.96. Zero. Do that. All right, and then evaluate it. Evaluate either using the interval from your uh, stats function or just basically work that out, which is about that 0 0.4951. Um, P is between 0 0.4951 and 0 0.6715. That's how I work it out. Now, 70%. So, Given that the uh, claim P is approximately 0 0.70, it actually lies outside the interval estimate. Based on this sample, there is not sufficient evidence, or there's insufficient evidence to suggest that the uh, fashion designer's claim can be accepted. Use the word insufficient evidence. Yeah, it's really, um, how can you tell? Because it's either in or out. Right. Okay. Yeah. You can write the thing down a little bit later. You don't have yeah. to copy it. Right. Important thing is just do that. that it's right or wrong. Yeah. 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 You so it's always that. the same yeah. answer. Yeah, it's always the same answer. Yeah. You, you cannot say this. So, but it's always in the context of the question. Yeah, yeah. All right, sorry? You have to evaluate the. the yeah, you still have to evaluate that. Oh. You have to evaluate. If you don't evaluate, you don't know that 0.7 is outside the range. Oh, so if it's outside, you say it's. You, even if it's inside, yeah, you don't know uh, whether it's outside. Uh, you just uh, there's no it's, it's still a chance. Yeah. It's still it's it's in fair, insufficient. Basically, it's, it's the same answer throughout. That's, crazy. that's all. There's, no, there's not many variations apart from the context of the question, that's all. <laughs> all right? Example two. A politician claimed that uh, they're expected to win 48% of votes in an upcoming election. A random survey was taken of 250 eligible votes and it was found that 95 said that they would be voting for the politicians. Perform the necessary calculation to comment on the politician's claim. Now, in this situation, all right, listen carefully. If this is not part of a question, you can pick the confidence interval you like, either 90, 95 or 99 percent. <coughs> Nothing was said about which confidence interval to use. But clearly state that you're using 90% or 95% or 98%. Okay. Clearly state that. And make sure that your Z value, Z value you use is correct, related to the uh, confidence interval. All right, so what I've done here is I work out P hat and I work out uh, the standard error and wrote, wrote it down, uh, P hat is normally distributed. All right, that's that. I think it's quite important. You should actually always show that. Personally, you should always show up. I mean, if you straight away write that, I think that should be fine. But I like to show it that way so that I know I've got it right. So I actually worked out all three to show you. But 
in the actual exam itself unless it is part of the question. If it's part of the question, like part A asks you to use 95%, part B use 95%, please. All right, do not use anything else. Part A use 90, part B use 90 as well. Unless it says that, change it to 95%. But this sort of question, follow, follow whatever. So here I've shown you all three, and then you work out that 0 0.38. Uh, 0. Eh, why did I say 0 0.48? 48% of words. Oh yeah, 48, sorry, P is 48, uh, not P hat, so okay, I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention, right. 0 0.48 is actually outside the interval. So what I've said here is, I put down dot, 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 because it, it depends on what you, you say. So it's up to you, be clear, yeah. be very clear what the uh, uh, percentage co confidence interval you use. Based on this sample, there is not if it, sufficient evidence to suggest that the politician's claim can be accepted. Yep. So I put a little weight thing there, telling you, in some cases, you, you may not be directed to use the specific confidence interval. The choice is yours. Therefore, I show you three. All you need to do is just one. You don't need to do all three. All right, just do one, and then comment. Now, Part two, if you already use a certain percentage in the question, which is like A, you use the same thing as B. All right, unless it specifically asks you to change. That's important. Now, the problem type two is comparing two samples. All right, okay. So there are case one, case two, and case three. I really don't want to read through every single one of it. I'm going to give you about three minutes to read through that, please. So you know what case one, case two, case three, uh, all the three cases, and then we'll do a bit of discussion. Three situation, huge overlap or one is within the other. Situation two, no overlap at all. Situation three, partial overlap. So case one, quite a big gap, or this could be inside there. This, there's no, nothing at all. There, there's only a little gap. So basically the dot point, that's the important one. This is the important one. This is only one that's sufficient evidence to suggest that sample may have come from different population or something, the change may have had an impact. All right. So think about the comparing two different samples. All right. Use the we'll same go. confidence interval. Sorry. We have to use the same confidence interval. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's have a look at example three. A medical researcher conjectures that smoking can result in wrinkled skin around the eyes. The research recruited a random sample of 150 smokers and 250 non-smokers to take part in an obs observational study and found that 95 of the smokers and 105 of the non-smokers were seen to have prominent wrinkles around the eyes based on a score administered by an objective person. Use two approximate confidence interval to comment on whether it appears that smoking impacts, for, uh, impacts upon the proportion of people with prominent wrinkles around the eye. So, I state there I use 95% confidence interval. Alright, so let's start off with smoker. 
we can work out the P hat and using 95% confidence interval, P is between 0 0.5562 and 0 0.7105. The non-spoker P hat is 0 0.4200 and 95% confidence interval. It's between the P is between 0 0.3588 and 0 0.4812. Now, you can see that both p hats does not intercept, uh, in overlap, sorry. So, let's think about how we will answer this question. If there's no overlap between the two p hats, therefore, there's sufficient evidence to actually suggest that smoking impacts upon the proportion of people with wrinkles around the eyes. But we cannot know for certain due to the variability of sampling. Example 3 was my fault. I didn't read, it. I didn't read the answer carefully. That's right, sir. No, Alright, so if you know, uh, work out the P hat first. So if you work out the P hat, again, I will really work out the uh, standard deviation or standard error. And then work out the 95% confidence interval. Clearly show the Z score you use. That's important. And you can work out that's the uh, that's 95 90% confidence interval. Now the next thing is you've got this value now. Let's have a look at the next week. So in the following week, Labour intensified the advertising campaign. And in the poll on the following Saturday, it was found that 71 out of 105 people surveyed said that they would vote Labour. How likely is it to obtain a sample proportion greater than that found in the second random sample, where using sampling distribution of sample proportion for the first sample? So you need to think about using the first sample. Can you find the probability greater than 71 out of 105? That's what the question is asking. Right. How likely it is? So find the probability. Right. Well, how likely to obtain a sample population? Find the probability of a sample population greater than 71 over 105 based on the origin of data. Second one, perform the necessary calculation to comment on whether the increased advertising campaign improved labor's polling result. All right, so you know this is the situation. Uh, now, using your uh, class pad, you should be able to work out probably DP had greater than or equals to 70, uh, greater than, it could be greater than or greater than or equals to 7, greater than or equals to because it's continuous probability. Alright, continuous uh, distribution. So therefore, you can work it out to be 7.35, 3.548 times 10 to the power minus 15. So if you're not sure, let's. I'll show you how to do it in, uh, in your class bed again. So, that, yeah. we got that. so p hat, p hat, normal distribution one four seven over three twenty. Ah, better write it better properly. P hat, normally distributed one four seven over three twenty zero point zero two seven nine uh, square. Same. Right, so using your class pad, you want probability greater than 71 over 105. All right, so using your class pad, using your class pad, so you want to go to, you can either use statistics or main, it really doesn't matter. Now, the thing is, I have used main so that I can just uh, drag the numbers down. But it's up to you what you want to use. Uh, if I go to statistics, I go to calc, I will go to uh, distribution. So it's normal CD, the distribution. Next. So the low, lower limit is 71 over 105. And upper limit is infinity. Alright. 
the Sigma is 0.0279 and uh, P hat is 147 divided by 320. Alright? So you've got the answer of 3.888 times 10 to the power of minus 5. Listen, the reason why the answer I did is slightly different because I use the full value of 0. Instead of 0 0.297, I use the full value. Yeah. All right. So if you use the, the issue with using uh, stats is you cannot do cut and paste. Mm. All right. Mm. But if you use the um, interactive, what you can do is once you've got the, um, the function out, you could actually just delete the uh, but and then drag it down. That's all. You could do it that way. So this is how you do it. And so therefore you know that you can say that it is extremely unlikely to obtain a sample proportion greater than 71 over 105 in the first uh, sample distribution as the probability is close to zero. All right. It is very close to zero. Therefore, it's not uh, highly unlikely or extremely unlikely, actually. I use the word extremely unlikely. And the next one, perform the necessary calculation. So, you've done the first bit, is 90% confidence in the world. Second bit is the same as well. You need to use 90% 90, 90 confidence in the world. And you've got this value. So what I've done this time is actually sketch it. P head before and P head after. So that you know that there's a clear distinction. Yeah. It just visually a little bit better. Like what I did just now, I didn't. I didn't really pay attention. I didn't really do this, and I made a mistake. Yeah. So it's a good idea if you have the time actually do a quick sketch. Right? Agree? So with that, you can say that the two confidence cells do not share any overlap. There's insufficient evidence to suggest that uh, increased yeah. advertising yeah. may have. Uh, no, I, I should say there's, there is, there could be, there could be, there could be sufficient evidence to suggest that uh, yeah. increased advertising may have improved labor's polling result, but we cannot say for certain. Or you can say that, yeah, actually, say that there's insufficient evidence yeah. to suggest that uh, increased advertising. Um, there is sufficient evidence. Yeah, insufficient evidence, because we don't know, we really don't know. It, it, again, we cannot say for certain. It could be. So it's all. Right, so which, one, which one is it out of those three? The second one? The third yeah. one. The second one, yeah. But doesn't that say like there is evidence that there is evidence? So there is, there is evidence, evidence. But there's evidence, but there's no evidence. Can not, not we, we cannot be certain. There's evidence, but we cannot be certain. We can't be certain. We can't be certain. Whereas all right. The other ones, like, there's insufficient evidence, and you can't. Yeah. Yes. It's all variation of the uh, same answer.